Hello and welcome to part two of landed cost module review. This video will concentrate on tracking, which involves updates to statuses and dates of documents that are involved in landed cost modules, such as shipping container, purchase orders, and voyages. Let's take a look at the example, and then we're gonna break it down. First, let's create a new voyage. Go in all voyage, click new, type in description, we need to select a vessel, so you can select from the list of existing vessels or free text any value, for example, 100, and then select a journey template, which is an important field here. I'm gonna select one we have here. I'm gonna click on OK. System takes us to Voyage Editor screen. In here, we're gonna filter on the purchase order 425. That's a purchase order that we have created prior. It has been confirmed, and it has a single line for 1,000 units of that item 10002, which is a plastic chair. So we're gonna select that line and we're gonna add it to staging list. Then we're gonna click on view staging list. So here we're gonna see our 1,000 units added here. And here I will split this 1,000 units into two containers because those will not come in one container to us. Those will be split into shipping containers, which we can then track and cost separately. So first container will get 700 shares. I will type in transfer quantity of 700 and then click on add to new shipping container. Here I can select a new shipping container. Again, I can select from the list of the existing ones or I can free text uh, OK one, for example, select container type and then click on OK. So now we have a new shipping container created that has 700 units of that item. And then we're gonna select remaining 300 units and add it to another shipping container. It's gonna be okay two shipping container type two. All right, so now let's go back to our voyage. We see two lines that we have just added here. Each line has a separate container. Okay two has 300 and okay one 700 and each also got a separate folio assigned. Another thing that had happened automatically is a delivery schedule. So this is our PO that we have just added to the folio. This is how it looked before a single line with thousand units. But if we were to refresh it, we'll see that it actually created two delivery lines. So we can see that that single line was split into two deliveries. So if we can review that schedule by going to purchase order line, delivery schedule, and here we see that so far they have a same delivery date of 513, which is a current date today. We can confirm that by selecting one of those lines and then see that delivery date is 513 right now. Now let's go back to our voyage and navigate to general tab and click on tracking. So this is a tracking control for our voyage. Here we see multiple lines here. We're gonna review and understand why those lines were created. What I'll do here now is I'll personalize this grid and add a shipping container field to it. So now we can see that the first five lines, here I have them highlighted here, are for the container OK1, and then the second five lines are for the container OK2. Now, what I'll do here is I'll populate a start date for the first record for our shipping container OK1. So let's say it's going to be 515. Then I'm going to save that change. And then I'll see that remaining of the dates, start dates and end dates got populated. And here I have my estimated end date for the last activity for my container OK1 was calculated or estimated as 7-4-2021. And then I will go to my purchase order, select the line that represents that container, take a look at the confirmed delivery date, which is blank right now. I'm gonna refresh it. Select that line again. And I see that my confirmed delivery date got populated based on the inbound tracking estimated end date for the last activity for that container. So first, let's understand how we got to that point. So the first thing we need to answer is why do we have these legs? So let's take a look at the first column. I see the leg 10, I see leg 
representing two ports here, then I see another leg 30, and then another leg 40. And then for the second container, they basically repeat. So I, I see here four legs. We need to first understand where those legs actually came from. Well, if we go back to our voyage and click on the journey template, here we see those legs defined here. So we have a chronological order of four legs. Each leg has a corresponding from and to port, as well as the mode of delivery. So now we know, if we go back to our tracking for our voyage, where those legs came from. Now if we look at the line number one and number two, we see that we have two records for the same leg 10 load. First record has an activity inspect and the second one has an activity load. So where are those coming from? Well, in order for us to answer that question, we actually need to navigate to our tracking control center right here under delivery information setup. And in here, if you look at the lead times here, we have five records in this table right now. And if we look at the first record that we have highlighted here, we see a leg 10 that has an activity inspect. And let's go back to our inbound tracking. Here it is. And we see here estimated 10 days. And if we go back to our tracking control center setup, we see that we have a defined lead time for that activity, which is an inspect activity, which is a part of leg 10, which is called 10 load, uh, was estimated as 10 days. And then if we select the second record here, we st still see a leg 10, so it's the same leg, but now we see a different activity load uh, with the same lead time, right? So that's why we have two records here, one for each activity, even though they're, those two activities are part of the same leg, and each activity has a lead time. In this case, I kept it simple and I assigned a lead time of 10 days to each activity for each leg. Now let's take a look at that last date, 7-4, and let's understand how it ended up populating our confirmed delivery date on our purchase order. So in order for us to answer that, we need to go back to our tracking control center as well. And now we need to switch back from the lead time section to a blank type. In here, we see two records. So let's take a look at the first record. It basically has a pair of a source, table, and fields, and the target. So we see that we have a source table, uh, shipping container activities, which is basically this table right here. And if we go back, we see that the source field is estimated end date. And this is our estimated end date right here. And then our target is the table purchase order lines. And the field is confirmed delivery date. So this is our target field. And we have an action of copy. So we're basically telling the system to copy estimated end date from our shipping container activities table to confirm delivery date of our purchase order line table. Right? And system basically understands that based on our journey template, this is the last activity in based on that template. And this is an estimated end date for that activity. And it copies that estimated end date to our purchase order confirmed delivery date. So this is how we ended up updating a confirmed delivery date based on the estimated end dates in our shipping container activities table. So let's go back to our voyage inbound tracking and let's just change an actual end date or populate an actual end date. So we have estimated that that, that activity will end on 525 and let's say we did it a day earlier and it actually completed on 524. So right now we don't have any actual days populated in this column, but let's just save the change or update it. And now we see that we have actual date populated and at the same time, every subsequent lag actually got updated as well. And our end date or estimated end date for the last activity has changed from 7.4 to 7.3. And because of our tracking control center copy, we expect the same change to be a, a propagated to our purchase order line. So let's just refresh that PO form, select our PO line, and we see that this date has now been changed to 7.3. Let's go back to our tracking control center setup. And as you may have noticed, there is an additional field here called status update. 
So this status update allows us to update statuses of the voyage or the shipping container or the item. If we look at this setup right here, we, we basically what we've seen here is if the actual end date has been updated for the lag 10 activity load, we want to see updates to a voyage status to 20 goods in transit, shipping container should get the same 20 good in transit status and the item should get the same status, right? So keep in mind, it's, it's a lag 10 activity load, actual end date has to be populated in order for us to see those updates to the voyage container and the item. Let's go back to our voyage and we see that we have updated an actual end date but it was, and it was for the lag 10, but it was for activity not load, but rather inspect. So if we go back to our voyage, refresh our screen, we still see the original uh, status for that voyage, which is open. But now if we go back to our tracking, and let's say we're going to change that, uh, populate an uh, actual end date for the lag 10, and then activity load, and let's say again, we're going to finish a day earlier. So instead of 6.3, we actually leave it on 6.2, for example. Update that form. Again, we see that the, our estimated end date got updated to 7.2, right? Let's go back to our PO line, refresh it, just to confirm that the confirmed delivery date has changed. It did. And now, because we have populated an actual end date for the load activity for that uh, lag 10, we expect the status for the voyage container and item has changed too. So let's select this, refresh it. We see that the voyage status has changed from open to 20 goods in transit. And remember our container, first container, OK1, if we click on it to go to details for it, we see that the voyage status for that container has also changed to 20 GIT. Well, that was all I wanted to talk to you about the tracking in landed cost module until the next part.